is another Shoot the Shit Saturday featuring me, Rain Leader, and the Doof here, obsolete 2003. You're the Doof, but yo. Yay! So, uh, it is now the Saturday after Halloween, and I must ask my good sir, how did your Halloween go? It was very pleasant. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. First Halloween back in town, and I had a lot of fun. It was a bit cold, but it was a lot of fun. It was cold, like Jesus Christ! I was kind of freezing there at the end of the night. There, like my, I was actually like feeling, having, feel, feeling freezing in my hands by the end. So it was my son. Mm. How, how did it go for you and your son? Did you do some trick or treating? Yeah, we actually had a, a decent haul. Um, he went as SCP-049, which is the plate doctor, who is an SCP that views anyone as potentially having a pestilence. And the only way to cure them is to purify them. But in in his mind, it's purifying, but reality is killing you. And I went as I guess a I had a Soviet gas mask and hat, which I wore around for the majority of the night. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I really I really wish I had a pair of blur, pair of gloves for us, but man, it was just it was cold. Uh, what was your job for Halloween? Uh. Initially had a, a, a luchador mask, but um, it swapped that out to uh, a, a kind of a homemade purge mask from the movie slash series. Oh, so okay. uh, with my my brother got kind of bought a bunch of these online. They're just kind of generic uh, white kind of paper mask. And then mm. we just kind of painted them up to our own devices, basically, to to and we just kind of we didn't do anything uh it's crazy or anything like that, but we just kind of put that little purge vibe going on. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, all right. Uh, any new games or anything going on as of late? As of late, the right now I was playing Division Two for a little bit. It's kind of circling back into that. It's kind of wanted to uh, see what was going on there. But the new game that I'm anticipating and looking forward to is the Death Stranding. It's what well, this is pre-recorded, but it's coming out Friday. But this is airing Saturday, so enjoy that whole time crunch BS. But... Right, right. <laughs> but the the advanced walking simulator. Yes, I've heard about that game. <laughs> Walk from, that walks millions of, or not millions, but thousands of miles across the country, and enjoy the the beauty that is involved with this simulator. And uh, I also saw that there was a a little bit about a. Conan O'Brien has a uh, character in the game. What? Yes, yes. And it's 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 a, a hat or an outfit, which basically turns you into an otter, essentially. And you can float down rivers with that outfit. <laughs> what the hell? And it has, they did his, uh, uh, in, like, they did a 3D modeling of his face, uh -huh. and he did the voice acting himself, too. As like as an otter or like he's like a, <laughs> a character, a actual... character who you do a delivery for. Yes. What the hell? I didn't hear about that, but that's interesting. That. Yeah, it it was, it was I thought I saw the the clip and I I thought it was absolutely hilarious. He went to Ko Kojima's studio and did the whole thing there on the spot, and they showed it was it was actually in the game. This is this like one wander randomly wandered into the studio it's like hey what's going on it's like you want to be in the game it's like sure <laughs> <laughs> i like conan brian me per like me personally i like conan brian he's just hilarious and he always finds his way dead into things but yeah. you know that's that's just him he's just he's 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 a dork about it for lack, for lack of a better phrase yeah he's fucking funny. uh so i i i we mentioned before the recording that destiny 2 had went free to play now, mind you, I haven't played Destiny 2 since launch, mm -hmm. and I I lost interest sufficiently quick and other reasons, but I I didn't see it before. But what what do you what do you think of Destiny 2 at up to this point? I played it more or less when it came out at launch. I played I paid the full price for PS4 when it came out, and it was it was okay. It was one and done. I mean, the game was not 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 necessarily broken, but due to just what being tied to Activision and how they butchered the, the story and the content in D uh, Destiny 1 and then even on, into Destiny 2 where they it was a whole game and then they, they kind of 
chopped it up and this is what we're gonna sell you at front and then all the extra dlc that you have to pay for at a later time not to mention they killed nathan Fillon's character yeah <laughs> which basically killed the game for me all the day like nope not interested anymore peace i'm out yes um uh, it the game just felt extremely repetitive and I just I just was not feeling it whatsoever. Yeah. It was it was it was it's not a game for me. Um uh, Yeah, cuz like Air, Air theme was cool when it was new. Mm -hmm. You know, like hey, woo. But then you realize it's just a bunch of flashing lights. You know, a, a distraction from the lack of evolution of the gameplay since the first game. Yeah, it's kind of a, a non-Halo Halo game. Yeah, you know what? I will say this. Halo has had to me had not changed at all since the first Halo. Like I I really I really do feel that way. But I would have to agree that peak Halo was Halo 3. Ever since then it's just been like And if you hear that noise, that's espionage in the background. He's he's on his phone listening on the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like he's checking out somewhere at like an HB or, or something like that. Can you do a price That's... check? <laughs> so, um, yeah, that, that's my opinion of Halo, though. Halo 3 was peak Halo. Everything after that, it just went downhill. Um, I briefly played Halo 3, only the, the PvP. I never actually, like, played the story. And I played, I think, like, the first Halo on the original Xbox back in the day. And, mm -hmm. um... That was fun. And even like the PvP that I did play, I remember that, that giant ass hammer. Yeah. <laughs> it's overplayed, but I enjoyed the Warhawk escape scene at the end of the first Halo. Mm -hmm. But it seems like every Halo game would require an elaborate Warhawk scene. And I was just like, oh, look, we're on Halo 5, and they still have an elaborate Warhawk scene. Are we not moving past there? Yeah. You know, I'm getting tired of this. Uh, it's just like the gears, like it's it's it keeps changing, but at the same time, it's like you still have the chainsaw gun, which is like that's like the the highlight of the game, I guess. It's the chainsaw gun, but yeah, it, it. I had a point to make. I just lost it right now, so it'll come <laughs> back to me later. But um, Halo multiplayer was pretty good for three. I I enjoyed the split screen. You know, just watching their player screen, just being an asshole about it. But you know, that, that's Halo. Uh, whoa, oh, that's right. You know what? You know what? That you know what? One thing that tripped me up though. What's that? The first Halo was called Halo Combat Evolved, mm. but it didn't have anything that was significantly an advancement in the first-person sh shooter genre, since other games had already done what they did. Uh, the only thing I could say that Halo added that no one else did up to that point was sh the shield mechanic. Mm. Which then started this whole stupid fucking trend of every shooter after that up to recently was, oh, you're low on health? Go hide in a corner until you regenerate your health. Yeah. Or you regenerate your shield or whatever. It was just... I hate Halo for introducing that mechanic because it, it, it truly devolved the date the the genre of the game into nothing but more than just that. I mean, you play it, you, you see it in, in um, was it a uh, Call of Duty? Uh, you see it in Battlefield now. Uh, other games, you know, Black Ops, uh, Modern Warfare. It, it just is really fucking dumb, you know the. I guess I guess that's a little tough, but I guess for the little right now, mechanics that were introduced that just won't fucking go away. <laughs> so, uh, from what you're saying right now, staying on this, on that topic, you're more of a fan of the traditional. You have to find either health or armor packs to re regenerate or recuperate. Oh. Yes, yes, and I will say that the recent Doom game, not uh, the. the I guess the ones out right now. Yeah. Did a fantastic job of returning to that system because uh, Doom is, should is traditionally about you know just go 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 kill kill kill. But if you're high in a corner, then it interrupts that you know that groove. The run and gun. Right. So 
Bethesda, this is like the one fucking thing they done right recently. Um, they they did that right, and it, it, it makes me feel like a ru- a true run and gun situation. And I'm a, I'm a fan of the game and a fan of how they had the mechanic worked out. Yeah. Um, what mechanics that you have thought of that were recent that you just find are absolute bullshit? Um, in regards to mechanics, hmm. I don't know. Um, I have to think about that. But for for me right now, it's just like I guess it's just like the 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 battle royal. I know it's not a mechanic, but for me, it's just like that's like the the thing right now a that trend. yeah and. It, it, it became popular with the player unknown battleground and then after that everyone saw that as a cash cow it's just like and that just set a wildfire of every new multiplayer game basically coming out we have to include a battle royal in it now because that's pubg the... battlefield uh fortnite yeah, um, fortnite fucking yeah. fallout yes Es- es- Espionage is saying that he has a complaint about a level it up, but re- reality is, except for those ma- you know battle royales, most games do not have a battle level up comp uh, mechanic. Um, of course he says TFC. He knows that's that. Um, no, they fucking don't. See, he, he's saying that no, those games are, are just a dumb mechanic. But the reality is, it's not in most games in one form or another. Um, but we're not we're never we're never we're not going to return to a, a, a style of game because people have to feel like they achieve something when they can, when they reach that certain level. The, the a game that I can say for sure that did have not have a mechanic and it felt rewarding was Breath of the Wild. Mm-hmm. Um, that game, you stay the same level, you stay the same thing, you don't get a bunch of spells, you're just looking for equipment to, that are just, which, you know, can be replaced. And there are games out there that don't have to ha- that, don't ha- that don't have a level of attack. There are plenty of them. Yeah. Um, what other games recently as well? <sighs> See, I'm, I'm, all track now. Yeah, but Monster Hunter, Monster Hunter World Hat did have a level up attack. Yes, it does. But he's he's, he's the way he's talking about it is like the the, the player it's himself. You don't increase the the player itself doesn't have a level up mechanic. The the gear and the armor that has a leveling up, but not the individual itself. The hunter rank does. That's that's the individual thing. That is accumulates through experience, which then uh, uh, lets you do some more things and further upgrade your equipment. The hunter rank does is experience based. The initial rank ups are based on initially to be in the story, but you can't do certain things until you gain the experience manually by completing uh, missions. And a brief segue that we brought up Monster Hunter, but we can just still stay on the topic. It looks like the there's now like a definitive release date of the new expansion on PC for Monster Hunter. Yes, and I am looking forward to it. I, I do expect to be playing um, the original game up to that point, just so I have all my you know stuff. I mean, it's not that matter when I hit Master Rate, but it should help out a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh. Are you going to be playing with me since you're on a, a shift that's more a dribble with, you know, my shift? Yeah, I should be able to. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, I, I feel good about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, just to change gears, because we were kind of sort of just talking about this. I have sort of fell in love with Gundam. Not, not Gundam Wing now. But Gundam uh, UC, you know, the original storyline that featured the uh, Seek Zeon and all that and uh, the Earth Federation. Mm. Uh, I, I've been watching several uh, shows that were on YouTube and as well as other like Amazon Prime and stuff like that. Mm. And there are some parts of the show that, hush, uh, that are 
more dramatic than others, but there are some gnarly combat scenes in Gundam. Uh, Gundam Wing was on Toonami, which you know you saw mm. and I saw. Uh, but the original Gundam series, uh, the main storyline was on Toonami, maybe, but it was mostly Gundam Wing that was on Toonami. Ah. Uh-huh. And that one was much more dramatic and not so focused on military matters like the original series was. Mm. And there's like a bunch of offshoots, like, you know, a bunch of stuff that uh, Gundam appears like. For example, uh, I think there's like some like 30 series or something like that, or 30 shows Goddamn. that all covered Gundam throughout the years. Mm. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm a big fan of, of, I think it was, yeah, there's a bunch. You got like Mobile Suit Gundam Mark II, you got Gundam Build Driver, Drivers, Mobile Suit Gundam, uh, ST Command Chronicles. There's a bunch of, you know, shows and stuff like that. My favorite so far, in case any, any of y'all are true listening uh, to my little off the segue, I guess. <laughs> Um, I think it was the oh man, what was it? I think the eighth uh, MS. No. I'm gonna come back to that because I'm trying to remember what the show was. Mm. Uh, but I've been I've been just having a fun time with Gundam as of late. I'm not doing any models anytime soon because those Gundam those Gundam models are fucking expensive. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. Mobile Suit Gundam, the 8th MS team. I loved it because it was in the midst of the war. There was nobody special, you know, on the show, right? Mm. Um, it's just soldiers, you know, just going at it, mm. you know, and they their own little justice and stuff like that. But there's, there's like no, like, oh, I'm a legendary person, so I automatically win. Like, no, they actually have to work for it a bit, stuff like that. Uh, so I'm a big fan of that one. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, like you, I think you mentioned you've seen Gundam Wing. Yeah. Which, which is a good series, especially if, you're, if you have a flair for dramatics and stuff like that. It's not as prone to dramatics. Mm. Or it's much more prone for it because the main characters are basically the center of the show. There's no, they are a paramilitary force, but there's no grander or grand conflict at hand, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um,. What what is your favorite anime where it features either giant mechs or sci fi? Uh, See, I just asked a real difficult question, didn't I? <laughs> oh, in regards to that, giant mechs. Um, shit. Uh, I'll have to go to the Evangelion, I guess, if that's if I'm saying it right. Um, Evangelion? Yeah, yeah. Oh. The show that did not have a proper ending because the director says so. So they don't have to redo the show, but only fuck with the final five episodes every different iteration because the fact is the show creator doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Yeah, I remember seeing like the movie and at that that end where it was just like they said at some point when the, the director or the guy who, who was writing it had like a mental breakdown and seen at the end that it's just like I can see he had a mental break I can see that that yep. And it just got very weird and obscure. At one point, it was showing like the real people, I guess, in in the theater watching the movie. I guess that is like completely just like, yeah, I don't know what the hell's going yeah. on. But um, that's one that's kind of popped into my head. And that was that was pretty crazy, especially kind of like the the, the, the surprise plot twist that kind of at the end. Yeah. Every every version of the show has a surprise plot twist at the end. Unfortunately, it's almost always something a little bit different every time, but it's never quite the same. It, it, that show is inter- incoherent as fuck. <laughs> S says Bido, which is a good show. I would not 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 rather not not Bido at all. I loved the how can I say this. Like there's there's cyberpunk, right? Mm. But it feels like I I can't, I can't explain it. Um, because it has big machines, but it feels like they're in the twenties. 
Oh, okay. Or in the 30s. You know, it has that era feel to it. And the show is one huge loop. Like, where the show ends, literally, it begins. It is an infinite, ever, ever, uh, everlasting loop. Mm. And, I mean, the, the robots are awesome. They're, they're fucking great, right? Yeah. Um, characters are great. Uh, I think it's New York that is the location, which is the fictional city state of Paradigm City. Mm-hmm. Um, it feels like it's New York, while there are other powers like the Japanese or the French and stuff like that didn't evolve at some point. But only the people of Paradigm City can't remember what was going on. And then by the time, like I said, by the time the show ends, it literally plays into the beginning of the show. It starts all over again. Ah, that's the whole circle of time. Yeah, it it was a very fun show. It was definitely entertaining. Uh, didn't, it didn't have a big toy line, but I'm okay with that because some shows you just have to just sit there and enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also remember Tenchi Muyo. I think it was GX on Toonami. Mm-hmm. Let's see, uh, Tenshi Muyo. I'm all doodling here while we're doing this. Um, GXP, I think. And I loved that Tenshi. It was it was fun. Uh, I had a little bit of crush on one of the girls, not the adult one, the younger one, because I was like 13 at the time. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was a pretty good show. Uh, no, it was just Tenshi Muyo. Never mind. But I never saw the ending of it, though. That time is pretty sad. So I need to, I'm, I'm going to have to hunt that down. Just it's to watch on the it. list. Yes. What are what are your, some anime from earlier in life that you remember watching, but if you could, you'd watch again? Um, I don't know. I, I didn't really watch a whole lot of anime. Uh, one, I guess, was like Blood. I think, it, um, I, don't know if it, if it, I think that was just the name of it. I, I want to say it was Blood. The Last Vampire, but I'm not sure if that's the same movie. I'm, I'm crisscrossing that with Vampire Hunter D, but um, Blood was a, was a very interesting, subtle one with, um, with I want to say she was a vampire, kind of like Blade maybe, but she she basically hunted vampires. It's pretty gory, pretty bloody. And, um, that was one of, but I never... I didn't really watch a whole lot of anime. Like the ones I did watch were like uh, Robot Carnival, Vampire Hunter D's. Those are the ones that stuck in my head. Um, but I don't know. Uh, I would have to k- kind of get back into it just to see what what I may have missed. In regards, I heard like Helsing was supposed to be pretty good, and a few other ones. But um, and you know, hmm. go ahead. Uh, uh, one one show ahead. I I just couldn't catch. I'm sorry, man. Um, the dance tour. Mm-hmm. It, it was like on at late at night, like 4.30 in the morning or something like that. I remember catching it from here. It was an old black and white show, and I was like, what is? what am I watching here? What is this? And it would come on right after Big O at that late at night. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I guess this is a follow-up to that? I have no idea what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Symbiont Titan was alright. I'm, I'm looking through the Tsunami list right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't know JoJo was on Toonami. All right. Um, have you seen JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, like any of the parts? I have not. I'm unfamiliar with it. It's on Hulu. Oh, okay. Uh, it's best to watch it in sub. Like it's, it's just that much more entertaining because it is pretty mimetic at times. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you know, one show I really just could not understand, or could not, I really just. You know, get with the program. Yeah. Uh, Made a Man. Oh yeah. You know, the DS series or whatever the hell you know the net warrior or whatever the fuck it is. Mm-hmm. I didn't get that. I totally did not understand Eureka Seven. That show just like completely, absolutely, scientifically, positively evaded the fuck out of me. I just did not get that show whatsoever. <laughs> uh, I remember watching Fully Cooly. That was. That was a trip. Mm-hmm. And Inuyasha, you know, of course, right? Because reasons. Uh, oh, geez, there's, there's a bunch in here I haven't seen before either. <laughs> Jesus. 
um, Christ Modus, obviously Dunham and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. What's on right now? I'm, I'm, I'm getting distracted, I'm sorry. Uh, another, another anime I liked is Lupin the Third. I don't know if you've ever seen that one. No, I have no idea what, what it is. It's the stories of the haphazard uh, attempts to steal things, most of the time successfully. Mm -hmm. And they have to deal with their counterpart that is the inspector or whatever, who he works for, uh, what was it, like the <sighs> Interpol, I guess? Mm -hmm. It was a pretty entertaining show. You have to see it. It's it's not too serious. It's kind of goofy. You know, it's one of those just go on and watch for the ride yeah. kind of things. Um, yeah, I think that, I think that's that's all I got on that subject. Um, cool. You know, I, I remember watching one show, mm -hmm. and I I remember seeing it, and I just didn't understand it. Not like confused, but I just don't remember all the details. Mm. I think it was Blue Submarine Number Six. It was weird. I remember. I remember. I just like there was, there were fi humans who were fighting against some monsters that were coming from underneath, and they were being attacked. And it was just, and I don't know. I just don't remember. I, I if any of y'all listening know about that show, tell me, tell me about it because I swear <laughs> I remember about it, but I don't remember a single fucking thing about it. Um, yeah. So, anything else you got on your mind? I was actually gonna ask you um, of our group. You're you're the first so far to play um, Seven Days to Die Alpha 18. So how yes. how is that going? Okay, so Alpha 18. Is definitely a leap over 17. Mm -hmm. uh, they included high definition icons for most items in the game. Uh, it looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the shadow issues, which I had in 17, um, it was they solved the shadow problem. Uh, they expanded them with weapons. They they redid the entire skill tree system. Like previously. Like if you had, if you wanted the crafts like a forge and S, you're gonna love this. Before you would have to get to a certain level in intellect to mm -hmm. even just to craft the forge, which is a pain in the ass, right? Yep. And also you had to go out and kill zombies. That was a requirement. There was no way you're leveling up without it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um. Now you can build a forge without having to have intellect. Uh, items, it tells you which skill increases the level of those items. Uh, there's one for like bows, there's none for handguns, it, it's, it, it varies. It's all split upon multiple trees. Mm. So forges, those like a, people who build also gets an easier time because it, it, it lets you get more experience that much better and faster. Nice. Uh, so I, I feel like this version of Seven Days to Die is a much more balanced mm -hmm. version uh, with the skill tree rework. Nice. There's also um, models throughout the world. Some of the zombies, zombies got a little bit prettier, but I noticed they changed out the model of the car. It's not, it, it all don't like a Ford Focus. They look like more like more Crown Vic. I've seen small and large buses in the game. Mm -hmm. um, they also included a junk turret, which is a basic turret that doesn't really, they only, only has you pick up the turret, you reload it, and you put it back down. Nice. So it also only uses scrap iron to make ammo. Pain in the ass because you have to pick it up and reload and put it back down, but it's a temporary means. Yeah, kind of like the sentry gun in like uh, TFC, maybe. Yes. Yes. Exactly that. Uh, house house building is a little bit easier. They brought back all the light of the lamps which was sorely missing before. Remember how I complained about the lack of lamps? Yeah. Yeah, they they brought back the ceiling lamp, the other ones, you know, all the ones I've been missing. Most of them they were missing. Mm -hmm. They also have included powered doors, whatever that means. I didn't get that far. Um, we'll have to start a new map together so we can get into that and yep. figure it out. Because it's a whole new game. I'm, I'm not going back to 17. More than likely... 
we're done with the old fort because there's just so much more to build upon now. Mm. Uh, I also tried to play 10.6 of Imperium. Mm-hmm. If you remember that game. Yeah. They had a massive update to how vehicles are built. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't... You can't just build whatever on it. And there's a CPU limit. And every portion or every component you add uses up part of that CPU. Oh, wow. But there's multiple tiers of CPU. I guess the higher tiers will unlock later as mm-hmm. you progress further down the still trees. And to me, that's that's that feels very balanced. You know, right now you can build whatever the hell you want and not be limited by anything except the the, the build limit. Yeah. And I've seen some really cheap ass builds from my fr- like a friend of mine. He played once while he plays, mm-hmm. and he just spawns these huge ass ships that have no concept of limit. <laughs> so. I'm looking forward to that for that when that actually is. Re- I tried to do a video the other day, mm-hmm. which would have covered all the details, but my obs was like, "Hey, I want to tell your computer now, thanks," and then just left me dying there. Damn. Yeah. Um. What else is happening? Let's see. Kind of come up a little dry here, buddy. Uh, <laughs> Um, real quick, because like, go off, I'm sorry, circling back to seven days. Like, uh, how are like I guess like the zombies and like I guess for me, when I went out in seventeen, to me it seemed it seemed clunky trying to swing at the the zombies. Like, or try and swing and hit them, and I would miss. But then like at that same ratio, they could hit me pretty much spot on all the time. Um, does did any of that kind of like change any in regards to like the? It seems more balanced because the stamina usage of certain weapons and their power strike mm-hmm. changed. Oh, okay. There's also knuckles now. Iron knuckles. Oh, nice. That, and also a variant that uses has blades on it, so take that up for what you will. I did have a harder time killing zombies at first. Mm-hmm. Like, remember how currently in the game right now you do a headshot, you pretty much obliterate their head? Yeah. I was having problems with that. I it took me like eight arrows to take down one zombie. Oh shit. Yeah, but they also include a new weapon called a spear. Oh nice. It it's used as a long like a you know melee range, but long melee. How do I say this? Like a pike. Yes, and it does have a decent distance to stab. It doesn't do too much damage, but also if you use alternate fire. Mm. You bring it back, and you get ready to throw it. Oh, wow. The range is not as good as a regular spear mm-hmm. or a bow. Yeah. But if – or rather, yeah, the range. So if you get closer and you hit a headshot, it does a significant amount of damage. Mm-hmm. So there, there are trade-offs. Now, the cool thing is you can pick back, back up the spear. It doesn't break right away. Oh, that's nice. It, it, it degrades a percentage of its health. Uh, not advised to carry more than two spears because it does eat up an inventory slot for each spear. Mm. But I, I thought it was a pretty rad feature. Mm-hmm. Uh, ammunition is a little more common in boxes and containers. Mm. Um, they also changed how ammunition is made. Uh, sh- bullet shells are no longer made in the forge. Oh, really? Yeah, so that, that was awesome. And I think bullets are easier to get a hold of too. So they they really are streamlining things. Uh, I am excited to play with you guys as soon as we can. Yeah, definitely. Because I know we we made quite a bit of progress in seventeen. I know it's the changes. I know for me, I did do a lot of like the the farming, the uh, food su- food source, and all of that. And pre seventeen. Um, that was kind of my peeve because I didn't quite get any skills or like experience, I should say, with with doing like the farming, the agriculture, and all that. But with seventeen, I know they they kind of did that, so now I'm getting experience for it. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm curious going forward, just what the new changes that are going on. I know there's some, 
stresses with i guess some of the crafting like the the nailed baseball bat there was like you have to take it to like a certain skill or a certain workbench to to be able to do that but then like in reality it's like why do i need to do that for a wooden baseball or a spiked baseball bat but i'm curious to see how the quality of life how that's going to be with the alpha 18. it should be pretty good for because i i enjoyed it hands down it was a very enjoyable update to the game so far nice nice uh, <sighs> check it out yeah um what else we got going on um i recently saw the new terminator movie oh how was that it was pretty good um i liked it um you gotta take it for how for what it is i guess uh, i enjoyed the movie um i didn't go with in with the pre uh pre-process of what to expect i guess i just took it i enjoyed it for what it is which again was the terminator movie from now that's been out for a while uh, i've I've been kind of seeing uh, this kind of reports that the movie kind of bombed pretty bad in the box office right but um is it like is like is it like one of those movies that feels like it's good on its own but it's part of the the, of the canon it's kind of like what the fuck it's uh, a modern to us i can go ahead and talk about it depending if you don't mind me kind of going over a quick overview of the story if you don't mind no go ahead i've been ranting this entire time so far so i think it's your turn <laughs> oh because basically it, the, the movie um it they kind of dismissed all the other movies after part two and it's just, it's one it's two sarah connor john connor they saved the world from the apocalypse from judgment day they destroyed skynet all that good stuff so to celebrate keep low key they're i believe either like in mexico or central america just kind of hiding out keeping low and keep in mind this is like in the first two minutes of the movie and lo and behold they're at some bar along the beach just just chilling and then a new uh terminator arnold schwarzenegger model comes rolling in and basically shotgun blasts killing john connor in the first two two minutes of the movie wow yeah, and then Sarah Connor's kind of like, what the fuck just happened? And then the Terminator just like walks away and it's like, that's it. That's the last to see of Terminator. And so that completely just like undid all the entire other Terminator movies. It's like John Connor, the savior of humanity, just got gunned down as a kid. And um, so now it just kind of went a completely different direction. And there's this new female lead that is being saved by a, another Terminator from the future. It's kind of the same same format there's someone that has to be saved for the future two terminators come from the future one good one bad one's trying to protect her somehow they meet up with sarah connor and she's like sarah connor's like oh you're the new me basically we have to protect you so that way you give birth to the future john connor and all the while the terminator who's protecting her is not saying anything of like why it's important to keep you alive basically Oh wow! So this is like some bullshittery with uh, time travel and all. Yes, and then so they they have a sit down. They're they're kind of talking. Sarah Connor's like um, they're trying to basically get to know each other. Sarah Connor's like I was you uh, years ago. I saved a bunch of uh, I saved everyone from Judgment Day when I destroyed Skynet. And then the future Terminator, the the, the female lead Terminator, she's like, "What's Skynet? What are you talking about?" So basically, Sarah Connor and all them, they destroyed Skynet and, and their timeline, their story arc back in the day. But basically, there is a new evil AI entity that's still around, that's still just trying to destroy mankind. So, huh. yeah. but That's a little confusing. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was. I mean, um, it, was, it was another Terminator movie, so... Um, you can expect all the action is rated R, so all the action was there. The 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 new evil Terminator was a, a combination of liquid metal. It had a cool feature because part of it was able to it was liquid metal was able to um, manipulate his form, but at the same time he also had a, a inner skeleton that was like the the traditional Terminator model. So he was able to kind of split off and attack you at at a Two prong attack, basically. This feels like it has like. Well, first off, it pulls some bullshit. But, you know, like oh, character's dead. It's time to start over. You know, it has that. Theme going <laughs> Pretty on. much. 
Which is a real way of cheaping out your to- trashed ass storyline because your writers couldn't figure out what the fuck they were doing the entire time. But it is what it is, I guess. But um, yeah, that's that's actually a really shitty way of doing it. But I, if I guess, you know, time travel. Oh well. Um, the hmm. there was an interesting part that I thought that on the basic kind of sounding weird, but basically they they somehow meet up with a an Arnold Terminator model, and. Hmm. It turns out it was the same Terminator model that killed John Connor uh, a, f- a few decades ago. So of course Sarah Connor loses her shit and it's like, uh, "Why are you helping us now? I'm here to kill you." And he's basically now they they talk into his role, and he's basically, "Well, after I killed your son, my mission was complete, and I had a one-way ticket to your time. So like, now what do I do?" And mm. basically. For the that amount of time he's been stuck on in our timeline or whatever this time arc is, basically, he learned human emotions. He ended up taking care of a, a single mom and her son, and he eventually, to an extent, learned human emotions. And he, I see. yeah. So I thought that was interesting because the yeah like. What ha- what does a Terminator do when it, it completes its objective? Does it self destruct? Does it um does it like, go off because it can't self terminate? It's like what 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 happens here? But in a in a way, it kind of made it it created its own life and it learned how to evolve as human as it could be. So, mm. I thought that was pretty interesting. There was, of course, there's a there's a big fight scene at the end, and I'm curious what's gonna happen. Because obviously this movie tanked. It tanked really bad. James Cameron was a part of it, and even with his um, helping of this movie, it it just bombed. And they're really pushing this movie because I mean, you can fucking there's DLC of the Terminator in Mortal Kombat. There's the the DLC of Terminator in Gears of War. There was yeah. just the the publicity they were pushing for this movie, but this this reboot just tanked pretty bad. So I'm curious how they're going to go forward with a next Terminator movie because I I think the problem with Terminator which certain franchise cyber suffer is essentially too many terrible movies got pushed out and it's hard to rehabilitate a a franchise from that and they try to pull the whole Arnold Schwarzenegger thing as of late right? Oh yeah but the movie was already trashed two or three, or the series was trashed two or three films ago and continues to be trashed by bad films. It just, it just, it, and people get tired of it and they don't, they don't care for any of the movies that come up. Oh yeah. By, by hands down, nothing's ever going to come near one and two. The, both of those movies just set such a high bar of the Terminator franchise that anything that comes out after that, even with Arnold in it, being some type of reincarnation of the classic Terminator model, it's just not going to be any type of saving grace, and like, especially if they keep um, rebranding or like just doing a storyline. Because yeah, it's like this one they killed John Connor in the first two minutes. There was no Skynet. The one before that, uh, John Connor became a bad guy. The uh, Skynet was able to infiltrate him, and then he became the bad guy. And then they they really. Um, toyed with the, the, the storyline in, uh, in Genesis. I, I like Genesis. I thought it was pretty cool. It would have been interesting how they went with that story arc, but um, I don't know. It's just... And so far, there's only been one Terminator movie that's actually was in the future, and that was with the, the Christian Bale Terminator. Right. So. But you, you see my point, though. It's oh, yeah. Just, the, the series has got beat to shit. It, after a certain point, you just gotta stop yeah but we'll see because as long as people keep going to these movies and as long as even long after arnold's dead they're still gonna find a way to paste his face onto a terminator and um they're just trying to capture that same imagination which you know caught the previous games but it's, it's i feel like it's just not gonna happen the 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 fan the fan base has changed and 
you just you're not going to be able to capture that same threshold because of the 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 seam of the era, right? Yeah. And what he did, and it was so brand new, you know. T one thousand was amazing. You're not going to be able to replicate that awe, you know, that shock of seeing him go through bars and melt down and stuff like that. It's those not... graphics for that that time frame too. That was like mid to early nineties when those graphics came out. Yeah. But now we're used to it, so it's like it doesn't it doesn't shock us as much. It is, it's like whatever. It should be done by somebody in a in a basement, you know. It can be done without having to, you know, dig into it. Yeah. But... I I think I'm not saying that movies are repeating each other these days, but there is a certain lack of creativity. Oh yeah. And. I think movies are over relying on certain things like graphics or CGI, poorly done CGI at that. And in some cases, the movies would be that much better if a little effort was made to go into quality. What I like is practical effects. Yes. You know, they use onset models, they use actual explosions. That stuff is rad as hell because it, how it's done is just awesome. And it feels like there was effort made into this movie instead of just like, oh, well, here's a movie. Let's see if it flies or not. Yeah. Um, for example, say, Saving Private Ryan. Metroton of practical effects because oh, yeah. of, of the nature of the movie. But still, it, it was, it, it cemented it as one of the greatest World War II films of all time. If not the greatest, there's, there's some competitors, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the prequel trilogy for Star Wars was heavy on the CGI. And a lot of it didn't feel... Like, I, lo- I love the movie, but it didn't feel natural. Oh, yeah. It was all blue screen, pretty much. And it was, that, was, that was it. You know, there's, there was no, no feel. There's no love there. It was just... It was just a movie. Um, I could go on and on and on that subject, but basically, you know, it's... The, well, it is what it is. I, I'll put my two cents with that because I, I, I'm totally with you on that with regards to the practical effects and mm-hmm. the the two movies that pop into my head um, are the Thing movies. The original, granted, because the movie was done in the late 70s, early 80s, so obviously it was it had to be practical effects, practical with, with like the, the latex, the, the animatronics, all that good stuff and some of the scenes that they had to actually actually shot the scene and like reverse the footage to give you that that effect of what was going on and mm-hmm. i thought that movie was was perfect it was it was so well done and they they re they made a, a pre, they made a sequel prequel movie named the same thing the thing but it took place it was basically a prequel movie and obviously being done it in uh maybe within the last decade they had they incorporated CGI, but in the movie they were trying to do a fine balance of CGI to practical effects because the first movie set such a high bar with practical effects. It's like they want they made that effort of we need to get this right to be a good movie, and they they they, they found the, the perfect balance to do both. Hmm. Okay. There. Uh. One movie I enjoyed. That was hella heavy on the practical because it just there was no place for CGI. Blade. <laughs> Wesley Snipes was a dumbass. He got himself in trouble with the IRS and all that. But it was a masterpiece. It the 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 action scenes are great. The choreography of the fights was awesome. Storyline was solid enough, you know. Yeah. And he is the first black Marvel hero to be in a movie. R rated. You know, a lot, lot, lot of people don't even think about that. You know, yeah. Like, eh, no, no, no. It, there was, there, you know, Wakanda, whatever, didn't, didn't, wasn't first. No, that was not it. That was actually. Well, that's what they're saying. They're saying like Deadpool is the first R rated uh, Marvel movie. It's like, oh, uh, no, there's Blade. Blade was the first R rated Marvel superhero. Yeah. But yeah, uh, that, that was a good movie. I like that. But, um, cause yeah, like, I don't know, there's one of the Alien vs. Predator movies, and 
there was a scene where like the, the face hugger popped out of some kid and it was so the cgi was so bad that well, the face hugger opposed to like the, the very first alien movie when it it burst out of the guy's chest and it, the that's how it skidded across and just like seeing like the animatronics of the face huggers moving around opposed to this crappy cgi and it just didn't do it justice mm-hmm. but I don't know. But yeah, I'm totally with you on that one in regards to the, the effects and shit. Like, yeah, all the, pretty much all the Marvel movies that were, was filmed in nothing but a green screen. Right. Well, that's not it. Yeah. But, um, but I, I, I liked the movie, uh, Terminator, because I, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was, for what it, for what it was, uh, it's like, I, I enjoyed it. Some people might, might poop on it or whatever, but whatever. It's a movie. <laughs> it's a it's a nice escape for two hours just to kind of enjoy the the ride. Gotcha. Yeah. And uh, let me see here. The other little things I wanted to segue into is the the AEW wrestling. Yes. I I've I've heard about this. I think I saw it while I was at your place last time. Mm-hmm. Um. And I remember, like, hey, this this feels like old school, you know, Raw is for, you know, uh, Monday Night Raw or whatever. It felt like that was it. And you mentioned that they're going for the Attitude Era of WWF slash WWE, mm-hmm. or you want to go about it. Yeah. But I heard there is one specific individual who resounds, if you will, with mm-hmm. the aid, with, with the young crowd. Yeah. Uh, what was his name again? Um... Kenny Omega. Yes. Yeah, and I, I remember, as I, I showed you earlier, that he did a Halloween thing in anticipation for that particular week of AEW, mm. where he appeared as Sans from Undertale. <laughs> and we'll, we'll link it in the description so you guys can see it, too. And I thought that was just hilarious. Now, me being a fan of, of Undertale, I thought it was pretty great. Uh, some... It's it's just great to see that certain games just come, come out of the woodwork, even though they're not mainstream games. I mean, you ever, you ever played Undertale? I personally have not. I know you and S talked about it quite a bit, especially like the music, but I personally have not played Undertale. You should. It is very cheap on Steam. Mm. And if you play, don't kill anybody the first time you play. <laughs> no, it's serious. It's It's important. Uh, because if you try to replay the game, mm-hmm. the game change it recognizes you as you replayed the game previously, so it, the whole interaction has changed. Oh shit! So you have to go through it right mm-hmm. on your first try. Kill kill no one the first time. Kill no one the second time. Al- and then alternately, kill everyone on the third try or a third time occur. Good to know. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's fun. It's, yeah. It's got some humor. It's, it's got some great music, you know, but I would definitely recommend it for you. Cool. Yeah, I'll definitely have to try and check it out because, uh, yeah, I know uh, you, and, you and S have talked about it quite a bit, and it's just not a game I have gotten around to. I have to definitely try and check it out, see if, give it a try. Gotcha. Because, yeah, yeah uh, we'll see what, what AEW pulls out. Because I know, I think that if, it might have been that same show, or if not a different one. There was a there was a three-man tag, and quite a few of them, or one of the teams, they dressed up like Rick and Morty. They're they were promoting the, the new season, so they, they were dressed up like Rick and Morty, and the, the crowd popped for that. That was pretty cool. Yeah. But That's so far, rad. yeah, they're... They're doing pretty good between the the Wednesday night war, I should say. That they're they're kind of they're number one over NXT and the I think consistently AEW's been on top. So we'll see how long this goes. And it seems like they're a pretty solid contender to WWE right now. And to think that AEW WWE has fallen from grace, you know, just not the same anymore. Oh yeah, as long as Vince is running the show, it's it's gonna be in a rut for a good long while. 
Who was running it back then? It wasn't Vince, was it? It was, but um, again, it was the attitude error. But now again, it's um, publicly shared, and there's there's um, the shareholders you have to appease to, and there's the the certain demographics and all the ratings and all. It's just so much talent that's being pissed away just because. Again, again, Vince too. He's just he's a weird guy that he has a certain thing going on with uh, his vision, I guess I should say. Mm, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. You had the, the same two or three wrestlers that are just always in the relevant, while everyone else is basically just being shelved. Gotcha. All right. So uh, on that note, uh, this month will be a different month for us. Uh, espionage has essentially recused himself for the month as he's trying to renew his insurance license so he can, if he wants to be, continue being an insurance agent. So it'll be predominantly me and Obs. Um, we're going to try a few new, a new game or two if he's okay with that. Yeah. Uh, Spy Party is one of those games. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm hoping. He'll be up for some War Thunder this month to see if we did whatever troll we can get into. Yeah, I enjoyed uh, War Thunder. I, I liked yeah. it. S was like, I don't like it. <laughs> I'm like, dude, that's okay. You don't have to like, you know, complain. If it's not your thing, it's not your thing. At least he tried it. See, that's me. I, I like if he at least tried it. If he didn't like it, that's fine. But at least try it to where you can get a hand of it and see if he didn't like it. And if you can, then great. Yeah, um, I I like the tank mode. I mm-hmm. I like the tank mode the the best, but that's I'm not strong at it. I, I'm better playing the boats than playing the tanks. But I I yeah. wouldn't mind getting better at playing the tanks. I would definitely advise that because like boats are fun, but they're it's it's very long queues. Yeah. But tank queues tend to be the quickest and for that too. Uh, like me, I play boats occasionally, mm-hmm. but I have destroyers, so it's like whatever. Uh, if you have a cruiser, which is later down the game, it's like holy shit, that's awesome. But I'm a I I like tanks too. Like right now, I'm actually to be releasing a video within the next month or two. Mm-hmm. That is essentially a compilation bid. Nice. Uh, with me in a tighter H1. Uh, I'm trying to be flashy with it. It's you know make it all. Maybe it's fuck, but <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I mean, it may be it may be a good video, maybe not, but but it, it'd be a solid try, you know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. What else? What else? We'll, what else? We'll see what, what else? we're um, gonna we'll provide this. What content we're gonna um, provide the the this channel? I know last month it was the the Scaretober with oddities and entrails this month. Let's see what we get our hands into. Like I said, S is in a bit of a hiatus right now, but with Ring and Eyes. And, the, um... the Adventures of Obs and Ring. <laughs> yeah. See how, how, how popular we get as we go into these games and laugh at S afterwards saying, look, ha, 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 this was us. Ha. Yes. Anyways. But, um... you'll, you'll probably get mad somehow, but that's, that's whatever. Yeah. All Let's right. Settle down. Um, I think that's, I think that'll not be pretty much it for this week. Yes. One last thing for me. Mm. Have you seen the show, Mr. Robot? No. Oh. I. This is the first I've heard of it. What is this? It is a really good show. It is on USA right now. It is on its Mr. last Robot. season, and it it is it is pretty badass. Uh, I'm trying to figure out which season i think it's season four that's right now and if you can double check that for me yeah that's season wild. four so season four is is the current season that's on right now it's on usa but it's a really good what's, show yes what's the premise um there's a it's a tech guy who's basically working on a secret organization basically called f society and he's basically trying to bring down the system. Um, are you familiar with the movie Fight Club? Uh, yeah, I haven't seen it, but I'm aware of it. Also, rule number one, we don't talk about Fight Club. Rule number two, <laughs> we don't talk about Fight Club. Yes. Um, to me, this show is Fight Club 2.0. Mm, okay. 
it's a but it's a more updated version because uh fight club was a little bit more you got your hands dirty this one it's more all about hacking and how they can bring the system down because motherfucking henry rue is in that show <laughs> And he is a trans woman and a cyber terrorist and the head of the dark what the fuck? Yes. What is this shit? It it's a it's a really good show and um again it's it's on the, the final season right now, it's season four. It's it has to do with uh, the dark army, it's it's with this whole thing of not necessarily a shadow government organization, it's just like a shadow thing that's has their hands basically in everything. They have their version of basically Enron. It's it's, it's called E Corp and it has like the same exact logo. And right. they are basically like they're they're the ones that have their hands in everything. Nothing revolves without E Corp being a part of it. And the main character, uh Rami Malik, that's well, the that's the actor, but nonetheless, he's basically trying to find a way to bring them down and it's just a, a series of unfortunate events basically that that pans kinda, out kind of reminds me of watchdogs it can yeah that, that's a good way to put it to watchdogs because there's a lot of hacking elements uh not necessarily of, of the whole gadgets and like changing stoplights and all that but there is that bit of an element to it yes and um like i said it's, it's kind of like an updated version of fight club but doing it with with hacking opposed to um actual fight clubs in basements i guess <laughs> but in, in, you know on on that note of tv series that are ongoing yeah i need to watch the 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 man in high castle i have not heard of that one the man i can okay so it's an alternate timeline mm -hmm. the, the man in high castle is a tv series that's on amazon prime where you the US lost the war or World War Two. Ah. Uh. And Japan controls the the Western states mm -hmm. and uh the Greater Reich controls the Midwest and the Eastern states. Mm -hmm. And it's like a couple of years in the future, like in the sixties, and Hitler's old and he has Parkinson's, he's dying, whatever. But it it follows these people who are the resistance. But also, this is where it gets weird. Um, people have, are, at a certain point, there's a character in the show which introduces these film reels. And these film reels show our timeline. You know, the USA want winning, mm -hmm. Japan being defeated, Hitler being defeated, the Soviets invading and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. And... It turns out those reels are in there by people who can cross the threshold between universes. Interesting. And like they, the the Nazis get a hold of one one person mm. who they sedate, and they're like, we did, we must learn more about this because you know we have a person here who brought this film reel from an alternate time timeline, and we must learn how to manipulate ourselves to jump across the timeline, or mm. across the thresholds of the multiverse. And I seriously need to watch that show. I finally got to see a recap, and which of course offered it most of it, right? <laughs> um, but that show is capturing my imagination right now. Nice. So I think I'm gonna start watching it like tomorrow, maybe. Mm -hmm. But that, that's my my show of the week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, Man in the High Castle for me. I like I said, Mr. Robots on USA and all that good stuff. So I have the previous seasons, but when this one comes out on disc, I'll be, be sure to get that. It was a huge um, break in between seasons because um, Rami Malek, the actor, he was he did the movie the movie Bohemian Rhapsody. So I guess they they kind of had to take a break from the show while he did that movie but now obviously the movie's over and they're able to record or do the season four of mr robot but this is a, a really good show i like it a lot he's doing a really good job in this one as well but um those are our our show recommendations <laughs> gotcha but all right i think we'll end it up here yeah i think we're at a good stopping point all right 
Well, uh, I believe that is all for this week, ladies and gentlemen. Right. So this has been Obsolete 2003. Yo. And this has been Green Leader, and we are signing off. But uh, y'all have a wonderful week, and hope y'all enjoy the show. Yes. Settle down. Cool. Oh.